Hello everyone, my name is Marion with DTM Real Talk Channel. It's the channel that you can tune into, have the ability to listen to the thoughts of others about topics all over the world that touch every one of our lives. Everybody, everybody goes through basically the same thing. There is nothing new under the sun. So if you're going through, someone else has already been there. Maybe you can find hope. Maybe it's a pathway that can set you on the right road just by tuning in. So DTM, real talk, just keeping it real. And if you like it, like us at the bottom, subscribe, and let us know just how we helped you. Just keeping it real, nothing but love. Good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are. This is DTM Real Talk, and we're just keeping it real. And I know I sound pumped because I am pumped because I know you want to hear the rest of Yvette's story like I do, right? Yvette, say hi to the good folks out there. Hello, everyone. And y'all know she was pumped last week going off. <laughs> she um shared with us about the danger of being unequally yoked. Yvette had the first husband, and she was a born-again believer, had the first husband and shacked up with him, and he was uh, he was whoring, y'all. And the second husband, he was on the down low, y'all. And she said she didn't have a third husband. She had the one. So we left off last week with her about to tell us how she met the one. Or should I say how the one found her? Yvette, it's your time. Girl, all I can say is, God, God's been good to me. <laughs> he, he's been so good to me. More than this whole world could ever be. He's been so good. He's been so good to me. He drives. All of my tears away. Say, turn my darkness in today. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Hey, hallelujah. That's what I can say today. Because the Lord has been good to me. I can lay down in my bed at night. And I used to worry about somebody calling my phone. They ain't had no business calling because I ain't had no business talking to them to lead them to call me from the from the get go. Uh -huh. I can leave my phone laying anywhere, and if it rang, honey, get the phone. It's not a problem. Uh -huh. You wide open up in here. The Lord sent me who I was supposed to have. Amen. I was not looking for him, and he was not looking for me. Uh huh. But I had been through like one of those little relationships after the marriages and I had, a, I was in a relationship uh -huh. and I had actually started having these real serious feelings about another person. Uh-huh. And this was after the first two, after the first yes. two. Yes. Okay. And to make a long story short, dude got married while we were talking. Oh no. This the funny part. I didn't know. Somebody dude told was me. at my house. Dude's feet was chair, feet, shoes were under my table. I didn't cook for dude. And dude wasn't acting right now. I wanted to know what was going on. He said, I just, I just, I can't do this to you. I got to tell you the truth. And when dude told me he was married, I almost was like, if it wasn't so big and fat, I would have thrown him out the door with my hands and, and that was that. But Stop. I didn't. Stop. But I, 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 I invited him out the door to never bother me again. And that's the way that went. Well, one of my my sisters from church um, had met my met my husband on the job, mm -hmm. and she came to me and um, we would talk all the time. And so I I told her what had happened with me and that that guy, and um, she was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." So she had been talking to my husband, um, you know, as a friend because they work in work, you know, coworkers do talk, mm -hmm. and so she would tell him that I got a friend. For you to meet, I want. I gotta want to introduce you to a friend, uh -huh. and he and he would always put her off. And um, so then she come tell me, I got a friend for you to meet, and I was like, huh? 
And so then she says, oh, I wouldn't introduce you to somebody that I wouldn't date. Because if, if I wasn't, she was married. If I wasn't married, I'd date him. I was like, oh, okay. So I was thinking about, you know, oh, it might be okay, all right. So we finally started talking on the telephone. And we talked on the phone for almost, ooh, some months. We talked on the phone. The first thing that we needed to know was, do you love the Lord? Mm. So you got, and, you, got, I, you got it right this time to inquire. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you love the Lord? And I was always told, I love the Lord first. I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. But I'm in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And I said, me too. So then after Jesus, it's you. I said, okay. But remember, this is one thing you didn't know. Um, he was raising his children by himself. Okay. And so that was one of the things that they thought was going to deter me from him. Okay. But it's actually something that I really fell in love with because that's patience. So he was I a saw single that. parent. He was a single parent. Yes, yes, yes. And when I saw him operate with his children, mm. that melted my heart. Wow. And when we first met, though, the first day that we met, my family had had enough of me with all of those failed relationships. Mm -hmm. And they knew that I had been talking to him on the phone for months. When He lived in Mississippi. And when he came from Mississippi to Harvey, my whole family was sitting in my house waiting. He had to get through my mama, my daddy, my two sisters, my child, my nieces, my nephew, everybody. Uh -huh. And he said his nerves were bad because <laughs> everybody was my poor brother to death. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all right. Uh -huh. They 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 were okay. They weren't, you know, they, they didn't they don't fall easy. Uh -huh. And so it took them a while. But as the time went on, they know one thing. I am genuinely and I am totally committed to my God. Amen. And they know this. As they got to know him, uh -huh. they know he is genuine and he is totally committed to our God. Amen. And so it it took some time. And they just had to watch. You don't have to. You don't have to do much, but just sit back and watch. Uh -huh. And they realized one thing: that when the boy did say that he really loved me, he was real. We dated for seven years. Uh -huh. It was a long road. My daddy still did the old-fashioned thing. You can't sleep here. You can't sleep in no bed with her. None of that. That was not <laughs> happening. When we went to his mama's house, uh, Vincent, you got to go and sleep in the room or on the floor, and Yvette got to sleep <laughs> in the other spot. Y'all can't sleep like that over here. Uh -huh. That's how it went. And even his nieces, when they came from out of town, and they said, well, Uncle Vince, where, where Miss Yvette at? I said, she said, Yvette don't live here? They was like, what? Y'all don't live together? I like that old-fashioned stuff. Uh, he was like, girl, we're not going to do that. We, we're we going to do it right. That's right. And, you know, it, it, it made all the sense in the world. This man loved his children. He loved the Lord. And he loves me. Amen. He told my daddy, and my daddy passed September. Mm, he yeah. told my daddy, he said, my daddy would tell him all the time, when he, my daddy used to go and visit, and went to his house that he was renting a house. And daddy said, this your house? And daddy had a problem with that. And I always had a problem with daddy being so forthcoming, you know. Daddy said, this your house? You own this? And he said, no, dad, I'm I'm renting. And he said, oh, well, when you going to buy a house? Because you're talking about getting married. And he told him, he said, well, dad, I'm, I'm going to buy you a better house. Uh -huh. I'm going to get a house. That's one thing I'm going to do. When we get married, I'm going to buy a house. Well, we had a house. Like 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 we were married a year and we had a house just before we made right right before we made a year uh -huh. and our year anniversary and when we brought him here to this house, my daddy was like, "Oh, y'all just didn't buy a house. Y'all bought a house." I see that, <laughs> but, but 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 that Vincent had to do that to you because 
You tried to make that man feel bad a whole lot of times. <laughs> I said, you can't do that to people. And he was like, I'm glad. And and my dad, he, 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 he gave us his blessing. One thing I do know is this. If something comes up in this marriage, we go to the Lord together. Yes, yes. Um, there is no decision that I'm going to make without inquiring with, you know, with my husband and the same with my husband. He's not going to make no decisions without talking to me. Right. We are in this together. I love the way we love each other. Um, we're not perfect. Right. We're far from. We have our faults. He has his issues. I have my issues. We brought those issues into this marriage, but we work these issues out as we go. And it's still we still have hills to climb. We really do. Absolutely. We, Absolutely. We know we know one thing. With God as our God, we we're gonna be all right. We have we 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 still struggle with sometimes just small stuff. Mm -hmm. And something small can really come up to be something big. You make it big. The way you answer me, the way you talk to me. You got to remember that when you on a job, like a job that I have, and you come home stressed, you got to leave that in the car. Because when you come into the house, you can't bring your burdens up in the house with you. you. You can't bring all of those different attitudes and those different goals from outside into your home. Because the only goal says in this house is the Holy Ghost. We already know that. Ain't nothing haunted about this place. And so with that being said, my house is a home. Right. And the Lord dwells here. He sups here with us. And he is invited in at all times. The door is open. And I remember one time the door opened in Mama house and somebody said, come on in, Lord. I said, oh, Lord, already in here because I'm in here. <laughs> <laughs> he in here already. I'm not going to look for nothing because I brought him with me. I'm good. <laughs> we all right. So don't y'all worry. We, 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 we all right. We got some fighting power here because I got him with me. So there you have it, sis. There you have it. You yes. know, that, this is what I like about you guys. I've been up to Mississippi to their home several times and I uh, got my spot and everything, y'all. But this is what I really admire. And we talked about this um sometime back with the couples that came on. I don't know if you got a chance to watch the clips or not, but the main reason of um, divorce and all the other stuff, separation, is lack of communication. Yes. It is, and I like the fact that you guys, I've seen you, you actually do communicate about the good and the bad. Yes. yes. I've seen that, or, or the disagreements, I should say. I've seen you communicate about it, communicate with each other concerning it. So that that's powerful. And thank you for being transparent about that. What advice would you give? What advice would you give a woman, a married woman, that uh, that is married and been married a while? What well, the first the the first advice I would give is to make certain that you are really truly in love with the Lord because if you are truly in love with the Lord then you can be submissive to your husband if your husband is truly in love with the Lord now we got to remember sometimes some, we, we marry folk that aren't led by Christ mm -hmm. so you, you 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 can't throw like all your eggs in that basket because of the fact that you can shipwreck your own Christianity, your own, your own love for the Lord, because of the fact that somebody gonna lead you down the wrong path. Now, if you're knowledgeable enough to know that you know who God is and you know the right way to the Lord, you can't throw your eggs in that basket completely. That's your husband. Yes, you have a covenant. You marry him, but you have to learn some kind of way to bring that husband to Christ. Because it's very important that the Lord be the Lord, be the Lord of both of your lives. So if you're struggling there, that's your first task. You make certain that your love is intact in for the Lord and that you help to lead your husband to the Lord. Now, if you both are there, then you can be submissive to your husband and make certain that in all things that you do, you put Christ first. Allow Christ to, to lead you to where you need to go. Don't rush through anything because when you get married you got a lifetime together some decisions can't be made today it can't be made tomorrow 
Mm. But it should not draw a wedge between you because of the fact that you didn't make that decision. Mm -hmm. You can still love each other and you still can be in communion one with another, but you just don't let that come between you. What you do is you make that a point to address it. But before you address it together, you go to the Lord and say, Lord, lead us right. because we need you. Because we both on two different planes going in two different directions. And we need to be what you want us to be as one. And the only way that we can do it, Lord, is by your, by your by the way that you will lead us. We can't make no decisions without you. So that's what you do. You call out to the Lord. And before you do anything, let him lead. And then you don't rush it, like I said. Because if you sit quietly and you wait, the Lord, you will hear the Lord answer you. you when you pray a prayer, don't just pray a general prayer, Lord, please help us. But you pray a specific prayer. Uh -huh. Lord, I need you to help me in A and B situation. Show us which direction in which you want us to go. And Lord, we're going to allow you to lead. Don't run out before the Lord because you're not the conductor. The Lord is. We're the caboose. We're behind him and allow him to lead. And that's all I can say about that. If you're not going to allow him to lead, then why, why, why ask him? Right, right. So what would you say to um, married women that are struggling with that submission word? Because, you know, submission today is a dirty word. That's because of the way they look at it. That's the matter of perspective in which you look at it. So what would you say to the woman that is not being submissive, the woman that don't cook, the woman that don't whatever? What would you say to her? I don't know how you're going to make it. I, I would prefer you, please. It's not being a slave to, to no one. Um, you need to really sit back and, and look at what a real marriage is supposed to be. The husband is supposed to be the head of the household. The husband is supposed to lead. He's supposed to look up to the Lord and ask, Lord, what direction you want me to lead my family in? And you're supposed to follow. We're supposed to be that backbone. We're supposed to hold them up. When your husband fall, you're supposed to be the one to pick him up, dust him off and say, his bed's going to be all right. We're going we're gonna to make it. Don't tell him you're going to make it. We're going to make it. Because with Jesus by our side, it's going to be all right. There's a song that says, I know somehow, and I know some way we're, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. With Jesus on our side, though. You have to implement the Lord in what you do. Give up that 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 attitude of I can do it and I'm a woman and I'm a strong woman and I've been doing it by myself for so long. It's hard for me to give up this authoritative position that I have. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go and let God. That's what that songwriter said. Let go. Let God. You know why? Because if you let go and let God, then you will see that that man was placed in your life for a reason. Yeah. 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 And if you are equally yoked, you will see. You will see the Lord manifest what he wants in his life in your lives right then and there. Yeah. You said something else. That was good. You said something else. I'm a good listener. You said. I don't do things without consulting my husband. Speak to that. There are women out there. I talk to women all the time. They do whatever they want to do. Don't ask no husband. Don't tell no husband nothing. They just do that. Speak to that. Well, you know. I think it's disrespectful. What are your thoughts? Disrespectful causes division, causes all kind of chaos. And and, and it, it takes the wind out of your husband's sail. That's what it does. It takes his 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 leadership role and you make it look like it's not important. And a man says, and most men say, I'm a man, I'm a man. And and and, and it's good they say that they're a man. And if they are if they're operating and functioning in a man's position, don't do that to them. Don't take the win out of their sale like that. It's it's nothing to say, well, babe, um, is there something that we should do differently or uh, I'm doing such and such and um, would, would you be, you know, in agreement with me or, or, or do you do you have a problem with me doing it this way? Just try to get an input. It won't hurt because guess communication, what? Communication, girl, communication. Communication is key. And those months that I had leading up to me meeting my husband, because he didn't even know what I looked like. 
That's all. I could have been a, I could have been a booger bat. That's all. <laughs> Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't. You wasn't. He was, guess what? He didn't even care. He, he, he didn't even care. No, my husband loves me, and I love my husband. Amen. But, 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 no. It, it, it is, it is important to, to, to let your husband know the things that you are planning to do, or that you are involved in, or what you're doing. It don't need to come to him as a surprise. Or, and, and you sitting there and a whole group of people and you say, oh, and this is what I did. And he looked at you like, oh, oh when you did that. I don't know oh, about that. that that's, not, that's not good, though. No, Those not. kind of surprises are not good. And some folk, if you don't know, somebody's always looking. You, you remember this. Somebody always sees that's always looking at what's going on. Somebody's going to look, her husband didn't even know. Mm-hmm. And they're going to go and they're going to shoo shoo. And here goes some other mess. You can keep that mess down. Keep those 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 spectators out of your business and handle your business like you're supposed to handle your business. All right now. All right. I think you were very clear <laughs> on the submission word. So three strikes and you are in. In. I'm in. in. I'm in. I'm in God's grace. I'm in God's favor. <laughs> I'm reaping. The promise. I'm preaching the harvest. The promise. harvest, my baby. I'm taking back what the devil the stole devil from me long time from ago. You. And I rejoice today. <laughs> I recovered it all. I got it all. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about anything. <laughs> because God has been so good to me. And yes. I am serious. Yes, he has I know you are. To me. I know you are. And, and and you know, to complain. What can complain and do? I'm not saying that it's perfect. Like I said, it's not. But I'm not going to complain either because I'm grateful. Amen. I am so grateful. Um, you know, I, I, I lost my brother and I lost my daddy yes. in two months. In yes. three months. Three, it was two months, two and some weeks. Two months, yeah. And, 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 and it's wrecked me. It feels like it has wrecked me. But one thing I can say some people think that, you know, grieving is something that you can get over real quick. But it's nothing you can get over quickly. There's no time frame for it. But one thing I can say about my husband, I, you know, I thought, I, I, I tell him I saw saying, I said, oh, I'm so sorry for crying. I'm so sorry. And he'll tell me, for what? Cry, baby. You're supposed to cry. If that's what you got to do, you do it. Take all the time you need. This man has been more than supportive. This man pray, he'll stop what he's doing if he see me going through something. And this man will pray. Mm. If, 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 if he don't pray, he'll pick up that Bible and he'll find a scripture that, that'll deal with what I'm dealing with. And he'll read it out loud. He just start reading and I'm just listening. And I'm saying to myself, Lord, thank you. Mm. Because it's nothing but your word yes. that comforts me. Thank you for this man. Yes. Who is ushering me back into your presence where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> because I step outside of that and I get so angry. Mm. And you know, but he brings me back, reminding me that God, the same God. That brought you through all the stuff that you've been through in your life. Mm. It was good, bad, ugly, ugly, ugly sometimes. That's the same God that's going to bring you across this hill. This is a yes. hurdle for me right now. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I don't know when I'm going to get across my hurdle. But I know the Lord has given me my third strike in. Amen. Now I've reversed the baseball three strikes you out. And I've gotten into the marriage three strikes you in. And, you know, folk used to say, oh, when you get married and you, you, your first husband, you're going to always be married to your first husband, the first man you're married to something like that. I don't know how I go. All I can say is this, Lord, forgive me. But, Lord, thank you. Amen. I'm thanking you for where I am. And yeah. I'm thanking you for who I am and whose I am. Because, Lord, I'm yours, completely yours. Yes. And that's where I'm at. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Oh wow. That was powerful. 
uh, YouTube land, I hope you got it. I hope you got it. She has been so transparent. Thank you, Yvette, so much. Um, thank you, thank you so much. Why don't you do this? Sing us out of here. You know, I put you on the spot all the time. So sing us out of here. This is DTM Real Talk. Sing us out of here with whatever's on your heart. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart my mind, my soul belongs to you. Lord, you paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. Mm. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise, with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is DTM Hallelujah. Real Talk, and we just doing what? Keeping it real. We'll see you Hallelujah. watching DTM Real Talk. Be sure to join us for more conversation. And oh yeah, don't forget to hit that like button, share and subscribe while you're there.